So when we put them together, the galvanic cell and the uh, electrolytic cell together, we will see that the actual cell potential, which we call E cell, is related to, of course, equilibrium cell potential, EEQ, as well as the current passing through the cell, as well as the so-called cell internal resistance. And if the cell internal resistance, RIMT, cell internal resistance, is a constant, we have to say this is an retrial cell, oversimplification, which means normally the cell internal resistance may not be a constant. It may change as the current changes. But if we, for simplicity, can treat it as a constant, then we would have something like this. Vertical axis, cell potential, horizontal, would be current, or sometimes current density. And uh, this is zero current, zero voltage. And uh, this red dashed line is for equilibrium cell potential. Then we would have a linear relationship, linear relationship between the cell voltage and the current. And specifically, when the current is positive, we said it's a galvanic cell. And in this case, the cell potential would be equilibrium, but minus, it's lower than equilibrium, minus a value that is represented by current times cell internal resistance, or RINT, total cell internal resistance. This gives us the cell potential for galvanic cell. We are spending chemical energy to generate electrical energy that can be used to power a light bulb or other um, appliances. On the other hand, if the current is negative, the electrochemical cell would be operating in the so-called electrolytic cell mode. Electrolytic cell mode, which means you are applying a voltage counter and counter to and larger than the equilibrium cell potential. And this requested higher voltage or difference would be current, absolute current times internal resistance. Or if you treat current as negative, then it will be similar minus bracket minus of in current of internal resistance. Anyway, in electrolytic cell mode, the applied voltage would be counter to the equilibrium cell potential, but it has to be larger in absolute value. Okay? And then in this case, we are going to spend electrical energy from a separate power source to drive chemical changes in the um, electrochemical cell to store the energy, electrical energy, uh, at least partly of that electrical energy. So again, this slide shows the cell potential depends on current. And uh, for galvanic cell, the measured cell potential would be, as you see, lower than equilibrium cell potential. Well, on the other side, the applied voltage or the external, still the cell external potential would be higher, higher than the equilibrium cell potential. And in both cases, the difference would be current times internal resistance. The difference between the actual cell potential and the equilibrium cell potential would be current, absolute value, times internal resistance. And when current is zero, the cell potential just equal would be equal to equilibrium cell potential. And of course, as we mentioned, this assumes there's no internal leakage and uh, that's only simple uh, electrode reaction on each of the two electrodes.